welcome to Thursday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where today we're going to be taking a look at the puzzle on the screen, which is called Besties, and it's by Jeet Sampat. And we've had this recommended a few times, actually, from the Discord server just very recently. I think it's a relatively new puzzle, uh, and it's certainly got a rather beautiful theme to it. If you look in the grid, all every single cage is either a 13 cage or a 7 and there's a little German whispers line at the bottom, and that's it. So, yeah, it's a gorgeous looking puzzle. Very, um, in fact, it's, yeah, the cages are almost completely symmetrical as well. Just, I think, these two are not. So, yeah, it looks, it looks fascinating. Uh, and I'll give this one a try in just a second. Um, before we get crack, cracking with that, though, I wanted to, I wanted to give a shout out to Will, Will Semmer, who found the channel quite recently, became a patron recently, and unfortunately yesterday tested positive for COVID. Um, so Will wrote to us asking for some advice about whether there's an old Sudoku hunt on Patreon that he could try to get him through quarantine. Yes, Will, there are loads, um, but the one I'm going to recommend to you was published all the way back in June 2020. Um, I think we just called it our second Sudoku hunt, but there is very much a theme to that one. It begins with a letter, um, and I don't want to spoil it, but yeah, it, you might you might want to think about certain books about a boy wizard uh, in approaching that one. And I think yeah, that'll be right up your street. Um, for anyone else who's a patron of the channel, we have got a big event coming up on the 1st of February where we are publishing a new Sudoku hunt. So Will, you might even want to want to wait for this one. We're calling it um, Quite Approachable Sudoku. So it's not like the gas puzzles that Mark covers from the Discord server, which are genuinely approachable. They, these ones are quite approachable, which means that they should be just a little bit harder than gas, but not monstrous. So we're hoping that many, many of you will be able to try that hunt and finish it successfully and be eligible for a prize. Um, so look out for that in just a few days time. Um, other than that, the only other thing I wanted to mention is that we're gonna be streaming again. Here we go. This is Saturday night's activity for Mark and I. Um, or should be Mark and me, I suppose. Um, yeah, Escape Simulator, which is apparently like an online escape room type experience. Um, so I'm looking forward to that mightily. And we'd love to have your company if you've got some time to join us. Um, now, that's all I have to tell you. So let's get on with besties and I'll read you the rules. They are as follows. Normal Sudoku rules apply. In cages, digits must sum to the small clue in the top left corner of the cage. Digits cannot repeat within a cage. And adjacent digits on the green line, very short green line today, must differ by at least five. So let's just deal with those rules quickly. Uh, these three digits sum up to 13, and what you can't do, for example, is put two twos and a nine in there. Because although those digits would add, add up to 13, you've repeated the two in there. Yeah, sorry about that, I just pressed the wrong button um, and revealed a whole load of times crossword clue answers, which you probably didn't want to see. So yeah, that's the <laughs> a little pause. Anyway, you can't do this because this is uh, you've repeated the two in the cage, and that's naughty. Now on the, on the green line down here, let's imagine this square was a, I don't know, an eight. If that square is an eight, this square has to be at least five away from eight. So this could be a one, two, or a three, and this could be a one, two, or a three. So those would be the options for these two cells. We just have to make sure that as we move along the green line, we differ by at least five um, as we move from cell to cell. Um, that's all That's all the rules, so do have a go. The way to play is to click the link under the video as usual, and now I get to play. Let's get cracking. And my first inclination here is that this might be a colouring puzzle. Because, yeah, for example, one can see, if we look at this 13 cage here, this 13 cage cannot be the same as this 13 cage, and it cannot be the same as this 13 cage, because imagine this was 6, 7, for example. You now can't put a 6 or a 7 in either of those other two cages, so these would have to be different. So one of these would be 5, 8, one of them would be 4, 9. Now, that might mean that what we have to do is sort of color the 13 cages and maybe the seven cages as well. Well, because there are, 
Yeah, in fact, look, if we look down in the bottom left, we've got something similar going on with sevens. Sevens, whatever the version of seven this is, and there are three versions of sevens, just as there are three versions of 13, there are three versions of seven. So the seven here, let's say this was a two five pair, neither of those cages could be a two five pair. But in fact, I'm now wondering if actually what it's about is the middle, you know, middling digits because, hmm, that is not, that's quite an interesting thought because if we think about the nature of a seven cage and the nature of a 13 cage, yeah, that is it, that, that is, that is not a daft thought. A seven cage must always contain what I'll call a middling digit. It must contain a four, five, or a six, along with a low digit, a one, two, or a three. Now a 13 cage always contains a high digit along with a middling digit. So actually, I'm now wondering whether we have to color this by, by reference to middle digits in the sense that This might not work actually, but I'm just looking at thinking about this, this cell here. Imagine that was a middle digit. If that's a middle digit, because that middle digit couldn't go in either of those 13 cages, it would have to go in that cell, wouldn't it? Because it couldn't go here, obviously it's in the same box, but every 13 cage needs to have a middle digit in it. Ah, yeah, 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 right. Let's start up here. Because now, those three cells are all middle digits. Because if we think about these six cells in combination, we know there's a middle digit in the 13 cage. We know there's a middle digit in the thir this 13 cage. And there's a middle digit in the 7 cage. So the middle digits for box 3, the 4s, 5s, and 6s, are entirely consumed within those six cells. But look, we know those six cells well, we know each one of these cages individually must contain a middle digit, and we now know those middle digits cannot go there. So that is a set of middle digits. That's a four, five, six. So I now think this puzzle is colouring, but I think it's colouring middle digits and po probably low digits and high digits as well. Because, well, let's, let's award some colours, shall we? Low digits will make orange. High digits, I'll make purple. So, because because obviously these are middle digits, this, in the seven cages we must have a low digit, in the 13 cage we're going to need a high digit. So, yeah, by exactly the same token, these six cells have got to contain three middle digits, and none of them can go there. So there's their middle digits which means that we can do some more colouring along here. So they're low digits, that's a high digit. I don't know if this is going to work, but it's amusing me that, to think it might. And Yes, OK, and then sym symmetrically we can do the same trick in box 7, look. We must have all three middle digits in box 7 must be in those six cells. So given we need another three middle digits in those six cells, and we can't put them there, those are middle digits. So the middle row of the box, the grid is now middle digits because we've got a four, five, six triple there and a four, five, six triple there. Um, now that's got to be a low digit, therefore these have got to be two high digits. And uh, now this is where we might run into problems now, because can we actually go, can we actually take this any further? Ah, I, well I can go, I can go a bit further in column 9, but yes, okay. This seven cage must contain exactly a middle digit and a low digit, and this seven cage must contain a middle digit and a low digit. So in this column, I should be asking where the high digits go, and they've got to go in those three cells only. So they're all purple, and that looks... 
Oh, yes, 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 yes. It's all, yes, it's all coming together. This, these three being middle digits, I could have done exactly the same trick there. Look, those have got to be middle digits. So that's got to be a low digit. Those two have got to be high digits. I've now got three high digits and three middle digits in row seven. So those have got to be low digits. I've got, yes, I've got, I've got the same in row six. I've got three high, three middle. So those have got to be low. Now in this column, I've got all the low digits now. So this square sees three middle digits and three low digits. So that square is a high digit. That square is a low digit by Sudoku. Um, now, what does that mean? So this domino contains a high digit, which is a purple and a middle digit. So this domino here contains a middle digit and a high digit. What about down here? We've got three low digits. Oh, it's the same. Oh, sorry, it's the same in column eight, though. Ah. Yeah, OK, but this is a little bit interesting. That domino there is a 13 domino. It's just hidden, this one here, because those squares, well, it's a bit secret. You can do it with the secret or you can do it just by notice, noticing that there are three versions of 13. And in this column, you've only put two of them in. So there must be another one. And the 13 cages cannot have any overlap with a 1, 2 or a 3, which are the low digits, because you can't put 3 in a 13 cage because the other digit would have to be a 10. The other way of doing that, of course, is using the secret. And the secret is something I only tell my very favourite people. But today, you're one of those people. And the secret is that in any complete column of a Sudoku, the digits will, you'll get the digits 1 to 9 once each, which sum to 45. So we can do maths on those seven cells. Those three add up to 6. These four add up to 26. So 26 and 6 is 32. Given the whole column adds up to 45, these two add up to 13. So that's another way of proving the same thing um, but hmm, has this actually taken us forward or not I think the challenge is going to be to ha how are we going to color these these ones in and the only way I can see of doing that is going to be to use we're going to have to use these or maybe the whispers line. Ah, OK, well, the whispers line can't contain a four or a six now. It could never have contained a five, because if you try and put a five in a German's whispers line, you're going to have big difficulties with these two digits, because they have to be at least five away from five. So you'd have to go sort of zero and ten, which is obviously nonsense. But the absence of four and six Mm, it's not actually what we need to know is is the sort of polarity of this line we need to know whether this is a high or a low digit or this is a high or a low digit or this is a high or a low digit and that will tell us magical things oh okay sorry i've only just noticed i've got i've got triples of middle digits in each of the three columns in the each of these three columns. So my 13 cage here and my 13 cage here can't contain any middle, well, they could have middle digits in their extreme cells, but not in, not in these dominoes. Um, so let me just think about this. So in a 13 cage, if you can't put a middle digit in it, you can't put two high digits in it. That won't work. Can you put two low digits in it? Oh, I didn't turn my phone off. Sorry. Um, two low digits. So that would be... Oh, Bobbins, you can. Yes, yeah, sorry. Okay, I was about to say that this has to be a low and a high digit, but that's not true. Because if you, if you did put two low digits in there, let's say this was a two and a three, that could be an eight. So you could even go three and one there and put a nine in. So... We don't know the nature of this one. Ah, but that one. 
Ah, OK, this one can't be two low digits because there have already been two low digits in the column. So that one, obviously it can't be two high digits because 7 plus 8 is 15 already and that's definitely higher than 13. So this is a sort of orange purple domino consisting of a low digit and a high digit. Now what does that mean for that cell? So if this was the lowest of low digits and the lowest of high digits, it would add up to seven plus one, which is eight. So the maximum value of this is five. Um, and if this was as high as they could be, you'd have three and nine, which would be, yeah, three and nine is 12. And then this could be a one. So all options are on the table for this cell. And we, and we can't color it, which is the disappointing thing, because it could at the moment be either low or medium. Ah, but in column four now, we've now, we know approximately where the three low digits are because they're, they're in one of those two cells and those two cells. So these cells at the bottom, oh, this is beautiful, right, okay. These, these cells at the bottom are now purple, which means this cell on the German whispers line is high. Now, there's only two things I know about German whispers lines. I've already told you one of them, which was about fives, but now I'm going to tell you the other one, which is the nature of a German whispers line is that it oscillates. So once we know this square is high, we know that this square is low. And by low, I mean it has to be a one, two, three or four, but it can't be a four because the four has gone in the medium digit. So it actually really is low and it gets awarded orange and the way to realize that is let's just look at the options for this square there's seven eight and nine by coloring this square has to be at least five away from any of these digits so you can see even if we make these as big as we can and deduct the minimum we'd still get this square being a four as a maximum and it can't be four because of the the blue squares so it has to be a one two or a three and then, and then you have to go the other way. So we're going to oscillate up again, because once we add five to any of these digits, we're going to get to at least six, which we can't include. So that square is also purple. Oh, yeah, in fact, look, we can just very simply color the remainder of box eight. Those two have got to be orange, because we need three oranges in the box. So now this cell it's the same as up here. We've got we've got purple plus orange, so this square has to be one, two, three, four, or five. Oh, but it can't be. Yeah, hang on. But that can't be one, two, or three because that sees uh, all of the low digits already in column seven. So that's a four or a five, which means it gets coloured. That is blue. Maverick flying past outside. Um, okay. So what does that mean? Uh, I don't know is the answer. I now know this is medium. I know there must be a medium in here. Yeah, okay. Um, in box nine now, if we think about the disposition of medium digits, I know that's medium. I know there's a medium in a seven cage, and I know that this 13 cage here, which doesn't actually have an outline, but does add up to 13, must be a medium digit and a high digit. So that's all three medium digits used up in those five cells. So that square, that square has to be a high digit actually. I was, about, I was checking whether it could be low, but it can't be low because those two are low and there must be a low digit in my seven cage. So that's high. And now I've got all three high digits along the bottom row, which means this is very clever. I really like this. Um, that square now has to be medium because a 13 cage consists of a high digit and a medium digit. And we've ruled out high digits from that. So that's a medium digit. That's a high digit. I'm going to do exactly the same with my uh, my sort of putative 13 cage here. Look, that cell now cannot be the high digit. So that's got to be the medium digit. That's got to be the high digit. So now I've got all my high digits. 
for all my high digits in row 8 and all my high digits in row 9. What does that mean? Um, well, what else can we do? That's the other question. This is a bit scary actually because there's not much else I can see we can do here. How on, have I learned something? No, I'm not going to... Uh, no. Uh, there must be something going on at the bottom here. I cannot see. Unless that's more restricted than I think it is. I don't see how to colour anything in the top of the grid. Have I missed something here? I'm not sure. Um... I've got three highs here. I've got one medium. So I've got I've got to put one low in. One of those three is low and two mediums in. Oh, I tell you what I can do which might be worthwhile. I can get rid of a one from this square, I think. Because if we look at those these three digits here, the top of the seven cages. I know two of those are medium and this is the only other medium and that doesn't have a six in it. So in row eight, you must put a six in one of those cells, which means you must have a one, I think, in one of those cells, which means that square can't be a one. Now, unfortunately, that doesn't actually affect my German whispers line very much. That square's still got the ability to be 7, 8 or 9. And leaving a 1 out from here hasn't affected that at all. Oh, can that really be 9? No, ah, yeah, here's something. This square can't be a 9, because if it was a 9, it would be adding to 4 here at least, and that would have to be a 0. That doesn't work. So, 8... If this is an 8, you'd have to go 8, 4, 1. If this is a 7, so isn't this always a 1 or a 2 then? It's a low digit. I don't know if it can be a 3. If it's a 3, no, you'd be adding at least 11 to it and you get to 14. So that square is also restricted. There's definitely a 1 now in this domino. Oh, this is right. Oh, wow. Wow, wow, wow. Cheat, sim, cheat, sampat, take a bow. This is beautiful. Oh, my goodness. Right. Okay. Try this. I think this works. There's a one in one of those two squares. Now... Yeah, this, this this does work. So what digit can I now not put in the, in these three squares in the seven cages in row nine? And the answer is six. Because if I put a six in any of those three cells, because you, they, these, these dominoes add up to seven, you'd have to put a one in one of those cells, which you can't do. But if none, if these can't be six in the bottom row, where do we put six in the bottom row? Well, six is not a high digit, so six has to go in one of those two cells. But if six is in one of those two cells, that means seven is in one of these two cells, because we know that these two cells add up, these two dominoes add up to 13. But if these two cells contain seven, that means seven in this box, I think, is pushed onto the whispers line. And why is that so interesting to me? Well, that means that can't be a three. Because if that's a three now, You've got to you've got to put eight nine into the into the flanking cells, and we can't do that now. So that has been, our first digit is a two in the middle of the whispers line, which means that square's a one, and that's a three, just by Sudoku. Now, now what's that done for us? Uh, that that's just worth 
Just pausing though, that is really beautiful logic. I've not seen something like that for a long time. Sort of the importance of the way that these these seven dominoes and the juxtaposition of these thirteen dominoes, the way the way it sort of went backwards and forwards between the two, it's really beautiful. That's really beautiful. That square's got to be an eight or a nine now because it's a high digit and it's not a seven. I can't actually see what this has done. I mean, I can see it's getting rid of a six from this square because if that was a six, that would be a one. <laughs> Let's do more than this. Um, can we repeat the trick then? If we know that that's a three, we know we can't, yeah, okay, yes, so we can. Where does three go in row nine, I think is the question. No, it's not. No, the question is where does four go in row nine? Because what are the options for where four can go now? If four goes in any, the bottom of any of the seven cages, you have to put a three above it and the puzzle breaks. So you can't put four in those squares. Four is not a high digit and you can't put four there. So four must be in one of those two squares, which now have become, believe it or not, I think, a four six pair, because we, we know one of them is a six and now I think one of them is a four as well. So these two squares, now have got to be the counterpart to four and six in 13 cages which are nine and seven which means that square now is an eight and, ah, and that means that square is a seven and this square is a nine and now this 13 cage means that square's got to be a five to make it add up i'm wondering whether we could have got that a different way actually could we have got that by thinking about where two goes in this row? Uh, no, where five goes in this row. Yes, we could. Yeah, we could have done this the other way around. If we asked where five goes in, in row eight, we would have been able to lock five out of the seven cages because if it was in the seven cages, it would have reflected a two into the bottom row. So once we know five is not in any of those cells, we could just write it in. It could only have one option, which was there. This is really, really lovely. So now, now I know there's a seven up here, do I? So this is a seven and a low digit. Uh, which means what? It means that if, if that's, Uh, hang on, I feel like I should know what that means just automatically. So the other two cells are adding up to six. Um, sorry, I feel I should know what this means and I'm just not quite spotting it. That means that can't be a three because then you'd have to double three in the box, wouldn't you? So this is one, two, four or five. Oh, but it's got to go with a low digit here, doesn't it? We know that these are, this is either a seven, this is always a seven, and it's a seven and a one or a seven and a two. That's the way to think about it. So that square now, that square has become medium. I see, I see, this is medium. Oh, right, now, where does one go? Where does the orange one go in box five? It's not there, so it must go in one of those two squares. So that's actually become a two seven pair, which means that square must be a four to make the 13 cage add up. And that, yeah, it's very interesting to me that this is gonna unwind because we need this, this sort of digit to do an awful lot of work along here. But what can we get from this? We, if this is a two seven pair, we now can't put five in here because if we did, we'd put a two beneath it. 
we've got two and three here. Oh yes, so where does two go in the middle box now? It's got to go there. So that's two, that's five. This is four or six, this is four or six. So this is one or three, this is one or three. This is not one or three, it's seven or nine. And this square here is eight or nine, which means this is four or five. And can we just, can we go further than this? Probably can, just not seeing quite how to do it at the moment. Um, what is the natural next place to look for progress here? Seven, nine, maybe the thing to look at is these open cells in row eight now, which look to me like they have to be even digits. I think that has to be two, four, and six, which means that the digits beneath them must all be odd and must be one, three, or five. And that means this square, oh, that square's eight, obviously, because it just is. Um, so now there's an eight in this domino. This is a seven or a nine. So eight falls into one of those three squares. Now I want to put it here, but I'm not sure that's actually a legitimate deduction. Those two have to add up to 13. One of these is definitely an eight. And obviously wherever it goes, you're gonna end up with a five in one of those four cells and it can't be that one. So five in one of those three cells. It's probably a way of doing that. I'm just not appreciating what it is. Okay, so now we've got to reset and have another think to ourselves. What is it that we're missing? Um, what more? We, might, we know there's an eight in one of these. That's true. So we know there's a five in one of these. And that's useless because we know we know lots of things about oh there's a five here so that's got to be a four apparently so that's four and that's nine and that's seven and that's six and that's four and that's three and that's one good grief and that's six <laughs> and that's something five i guess um this is now five so that's eight and we're only left with four and six here and we can just fill those in good Good Lord, it's just mad. Now this has got to be one nine. And that's got to be three eight. Which is interesting. This, ah, uh, this eight is meaning we can place the eight in this box all of a sudden. So the, ah, uh, this has got to be a seven or a nine and it sees a nine. So we can fill in the high digits there. Now look, seven is locked into this domino where it must be accompanied with a six. This square's a nine by Sudoku. So nine is in one of those three cells along with the eight. Um, this can no longer be six because we can't put seven in here anymore. That is a something and a something. <laughs> I don't know what. This square, I think that can be anything as well. Oh dear. So this is eight or nine. Um, this, is, oh, this is six and seven. So that seems to mean that that has to be four. Why can't that be five? Oh, because it sees five in the column, yeah. So it looks like it's just unwinding by virtue of Sudoku of all things. It's really, it's just remarkable. So that's eight, which means that now is a, oh, look at this, that's a four nine pair. And this four is suddenly gonna disambiguate the whole row, I bet you. Um, so the only way of making this seven cage work now is two and five. So we can remove five from there and two from there. We can place one here. We can place three and four at the bottom. That's now a six. That's now a four, so that's a nine. This is a seven, eight pair. We can get these digits cleaned up a little bit and we now should know what that digit is which is a three by Sudoku. And of course that gets us a four here. Um, one, two, and three, what's the simple? I think we were, I'm just gonna use this four because I think that's, that's gonna do a lot of work at the top of the grid. 
although saying that it's just immediately died a death. One must be in one of those squares. So you can see the ones are sort of aligning and there must be a one in one of these two cells in column two. One in box, uh, this box, box six by Sudoku is forced here. So that's a three and that's a two. These are low digits and they aren't three. In fact, let's complete the coloring. So that square's got to be one, that's got to be two. Um, these are a five, six pair. Does that make sense? Yes, they're in 13 cages, although it's a little bit hard to see. Um, fours and nines. So this 13 cage here is also five, six, eight or nine don't know if there's a way of resolving that we need and uh, now I need more digits oh okay here we go where does three go in that box it's got to go there and that gives yeah that gives us the three and the eight it gives us a one here which places the one and the five at the bottom and the two and the six that places the six and the five here and here which gives us a seven here and an eight here that resolves that this, which I put the wrong digits into, but thank goodness I didn't use it. I've just noticed I should have put not four nine. I should have had five eight and six seven there, and six seven's just been ruled out. But we didn't use that for anything, so I think that that's still legitimate. So that's eight, that's five, that's five, that's two, that's two, that's seven, that's seven, that's six. This square here has got to be a six. And hopefully now little old Sudoku will just will just rule the roost here. We can put eight in, we can put one in, we can put nine in. These squares are two, three, and seven. So three must go in the middle, two must go here, seven must go here, seven must go here, two needs a home, and nine needs a home. And I think all that's left to do is colour in the digits. So let's just do that and make ourselves feel like we've really completed the puzzle. Six is a medium, four's a medium, five's a medium, two's are low. Oh, so I should disambiguate these two actually. So that one's got to be like that. These, 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 and these are all low. And that is how to solve the puzzle. There we go. Very, very cute indeed. Jeet. I really, really loved, frankly, what's going on in row eight and row nine. Absolutely beautiful. That is just such quality setting to think about how these sevens work in relation to the digits and the way they bounced backwards and forwards. Just, just loved that. Um, let me know in the comments whether you enjoyed it too. I, I hope you did, because there there is nothing, you know, you, you won't get a bigger endorphin hit from a Sudoku than that. It's just stupendously good. And thanks so much for watching. We'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.